Shalom fam, it's your sister, Biblical Bay Jelly B. How yummy? It's super late where I'm at, like it's actually early, but I got a message for you from a dream. And this message is not going in the way that I thought I, it was going. But I'm going to speak, Holy Spirit, use my mouth. That I pray this somebody, whoever needs this message, that you listen carefully to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying right now. Do you know what the Lord showed me in my dreams? There was someone who, you pray over your food. No matter what you eat, where you eat, you pray over your food. You plead the blood of Jesus to cleanse that food. And if you don't, you really need to do that. Don't let anything enter your mouth without pleading the blood over it. Especially if people want you to come, oh, try this food and I made this and do you want to taste that? Plead the blood of Jesus over your food. Because what I saw, what the Lord showed me, is that there was someone, there is someone, who likes to use food as a weapon to get people in contracts, spiritually speaking, so that they would dine and eat the dainty morsels of kings with wicked hearts or queens with wicked hearts. This is why you must know the Proverbs, the wisdom of Solomon. This is covenant when you break bread with people, when people give you things to eat and you're nyamik, you're too greedy, and you don't say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this food, you are not cleansing it. And that's what I was doing in the dream. I was cleaning this food. It was fried plantain. Not plantain. I said plantain, right? <laughs> I was cleaning this food in the sink that somebody had given to me in my dream. And they said, oh, you pray over your food. And I said, of course I pray over my food. What kind of eater you think me is? Of course I do. And I didn't say it exactly like that, but pretty much I was very blunt, very abrupt of it. Of course I pray over my food. And I want to show you something, right? There is somebody who's going to hear this message that you thought you was battling witchcraft and it's all this spiritual warfare is happening to you and you don't realise it's your hungry belly. You keep eating food and not even praying, not even pleading the blood, not even thanking the Lord for the food that you've been given. You have not cleansed it. And that's why you are experiencing certain things in your life. Why people can send darts your way and it actually, actually prosper against you. But because this word has arrived, listen and read this scripture. The Lord will save you from your enemy's hand. And every kingdom, every kingdom on earth will know that the Lord is God and God alone because of the situation you're going, you are going through. You will know God is God alone. Plead the blood of Jesus over your food, okay? Somebody, you've been a victim of this where you didn't realize that. Oh, beer, science, people trying to work these things on you is real. But you have to fortify yourself by not allowing your spiritual self to be contaminated by other people's plans, by things they want to work against you, by pleading the blood of Jesus over your food. Somebody specifically, you need to hear that. But there's another side of this message that I feel like this is going to speak to the perpetrator, the person who had wickedness in their heart. You're going to hear this. Somebody had wickedness in their heart. And the Lord spoke to me through the king of uh, Hezekiah. There is somebody, you are on either side of this either you was the victim or you was the perpetrator or even both all right but hezekiah he knew it was his time it was told to him you're gonna dead you're dying there is somebody who is experiencing this death in certain areas of their life their business is not booming like it used to because they went and touched things that they shouldn't have they open doors in their life by not just necessarily eating foods that were contaminated. Maybe they were the one hoping for death on other people, hoping that other people's businesses wouldn't prosper. They are now eating the fruit, eating the very thing that they were trying to give to other people. And this person, that they've been told, it's been spoken over them. They have had to acknowledge the fact come to the realization 
that they did something and now they are living, that they are reaping what they've sown. Because that's just a system. That's just how life works. They are reaping what they have sown. But it's not all doom and gloom. I always tell you guys I'm not the my hate kind of person. And if you did this to me, then I hate you. No, I forgive you. The Lord forgives you too. But you just have to make sure you turn around and change your heart. Because the Lord extended Hezekiah's life. The Lord restored him. Okay? And that's because he, he prayed and he asked the Lord. Somebody... When this hits you, you're going to know. If you haven't already, you need to pray to the Lord and ask for forgiveness for the things you've done, the things you've said in your heart, and for the doors you've opened willingly into your life by not following principle. Nyamin food anywhere and everywhere, and you don't even pray over your food. You can't do that. All right, there's a few people that this applies to in different ways. But there is someone, you've experienced death in certain areas of your life. Death meaning not things are not growing. They're not prospering like they used to. And you can acknowledge that. You recognise it was something you did. A door you opened. Something you touched. Some, a seed you'd sown into somebody else that you are now eating the fruit of. But the Lord wants you to see where the true problem lies in your heart. It is a spirit called pride. And pride comes before destruction. Listen to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah was too bossy. He had a little something and he was ready to show everyone. Called these Babylonians to come look in his house. I got this and I got this and yeah, I got that. And I'm like this and I'm this and I'm that. Bigging up his chest. All he knew was his possessions. All he recognised in terms of his own uh, wealth, prosperity, his value. He placed it in things by showing off to the enemies. To the people that didn't even serve his God. And that's the worst thing, you know. Sometimes the Lord will bless you. He will bless you in front of people that don't have it like you. Just to test you. Are, are you prideful? Are you going to really put down other people because you got it right now? Let's see what you do with this. The Lord will bless you to test you. People don't realise that. People will look at, oh, the Lord blessed me and, you know, this is because I'm good behaviour. Some There's people that have been blessed and I've been there because they've done nothing. Nothing really. Nothing substantial, amazing. It's just they were they stayed in their lane. They built their business. And the Lord allowed it to prosper just to see what will you do with your power with your wealth, with the things you've acquired, I've allowed you to acquire. Are you going to step on people or are you going to help them up? Are you going to show off and show out like you are everything? Or are you going to give glory to the one who gave it to you? You see, because Hezekiah, he was actually described as a good king. He was a good king, but he had pride in possessions, pride of life. But his heart was actually good. He actually knew the Lord. Look at his ending though. Not only was he prophesied to die, even though his life was extended 15 more years, in those 15 more years, the pride allowed for not only his destruction, but the destruction of the descendants that came after him. All that he had acquired was taken taken from him and given to the people he was boasting on imagine that boasting on these people like yeah yeah, that and that and they get the very things that you've been boasting about that's what happened to hezekiah and i'm not gonna lie this message didn't go in the way that i thought it was gonna go i just kind of let the holy spirit speak because i always pray lord have your way but there's somebody this is going to to hit it's going to you'll know this is for you But yeah, I'm just going to speak what the Lord put on my spirit to speak. I hope it convicts the heart of the person who this is for. Because we are supposed to continually be cut by the word. In that we can be reformed in our hearts. So that when we are presented to the Lord on the day of judgment. He says, well done my good and faithful servant. It is through our suffering, our growth. That we are chiseled into the person we are supposed to be. So... Don't take correction as something that's offensive or bad. It's because the Lord loves you. 
שלום.